Hello everybody and welcome to our interview this week and our chat. Um, we're going to be speaking to Annie B, um, who is with us from Vahair in uh, the south of Spain here, um, in Andalusia. And uh, we're very excited because um, Annie's going to speak to us about what's happening for her in um, the, the, the area that they're in and um, her culinary school and um, her, her Spanish kitchen. So um, welcome, Annie, and um, Hello. we're ha very happy to have you here today. Hello, Annie. Very happy to be here. Thank you for asking me to join you. You're welcome. So, so tell us what what what? How did you how did you get to the hair? So you're you're from the UK, from from Scotland. I'm from Scotland. Yeah. And how did you get to the hair? Or well, where is the hair for the people in the world that were joining us that don't? I was about to be really cheeky there when you said, "How did you get to Bahar?" I was going to say by plane. Well, but, not anymore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not anymore. Um, so Bahar is in the very south of of Spain, very south of Andalusia. If any of you know where Gibraltar and Cadiz is, we're right um, equidistant between Gibraltar and Cadiz. And from my window here, I can look towards Morocco. So if you can picture the very south of Spain, looking, looking south. And the ocean that, that we have here is actually the Atlantic Ocean. Mm -hmm. The Mediterranean is down that way, around the corner. So I just overlook the Strait of Gibraltar. It's a, it's I'm sure everyone has it in their mind. When you, that's a, that was a really great image, because I'm sure everyone can actually see the white the white houses and because that's exactly what it feels like isn't it it's very magical yeah. Yeah. here because the moors lived here for 700 years um so yeah that's people always say it's a, a very moorish village bahar and other people say well it was like this before the moors came but yeah. now now it's it's all painted white and um it's just very beautiful and feel very privileged to live in We were there last summer and I just, it was like a, it, yeah, you feel like you're in a movie. Yeah, it's like Star Wars, sort of, I sometimes think when I'm in my terrace at night and all the lights are glistening, I can just see, what's his name, Mark Hamill, zooming <laughs> <down>. <laughs> It is quite <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> It is yeah. like Star Wars. I actually referred to something. I referred, I was, when I went to Dubai, I find Dubai a little bit like Star Wars as well. So it depends on which scene out of Star Wars we're talking about. <laughs> so, exactly, so, you're uh, right. Granny, um, tell us, so how, how, did, uh, how did you arrive? In how did I arrive? Um, so I'm Scottish. I went to university in Edinburgh. And from Edinburgh, I was picked up on the milk round by an American Bank, which took me to London, um, which is a bit of a shock, country girl going to London, and I worked for this American bank, and then another American company called Dun & Bradstreet, and I was never very happy. And I worked out that all I wanted to do was cook, and having never been given the opportunity to be a shally girl, which lots of, um, lots of my contemporaries in the UK had done, I... Um, I just had never had this opportunity to cook and it was too late really to go to catering college, I guess. So I was fortunate enough to, to meet a lady with a catering company who took me on board and my salary went zoop, but I was really happy making, making quiche and peeling potatoes. And then um, I set up my own um, catering company in London and I had that company for about 19 years wow. and I cater for parties of thousands and I just loved the pressure and it was just it was just incredible um, and I would come to the south of Spain on holiday I would come down to the Marbella coastline Costa del Sol and I didn't even know there was a Costa de la Luz on the on the west coast of Spain. And then I saw a television program on the 3rd of January, 2003, about um, vacation, vacation, vacation. And it featured Costa de la Luz. And um, they said that it was somewhere to come and look to buy a property if you were thinking of investing overseas. And I was at a stage where I was looking for a little bolt hole and I thought, that's it, I'm going to Costa de la Luz. 
And a month later, I was on an airplane and came down to Tarifa, where I thought I wanted to buy my little bolt pole, but actually decided that I didn't care for Tarifa too much and ended up in this village and bought um, my house here in Bahar, never with the intention of, of moving here. And um, two years later, I did move here. That's amazing. So how, so how long have you been there? How long have you been there then? Um, I have been here for, oh gosh. Oh, I can't, I can no longer, I'll tell you, lockdown is, <laughs> I can't add up anymore. <laughs> 2003, it's now 2017, so years. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's to couple it. We came here in 2005, that's how come I could do that quickly. Um, and we've been here 15 years. This is our 15th year, so oh, that, it, it's amazing mm -hmm. how it gets into your soul. Well, it just passes. But yeah. it was the food of this area that, that, that captured, captured my taste buds. And I, I had no idea about the food of, of, I just thought Spanish food was paella, really. Um, like the rest of the world. Um, yeah, yeah. Just like the rest of the world. So tell us about the food in that area. Tell us what, what, what like grabbed you. Well, my, my life was food and wine and cooking magazines and eating out. And I thought I knew a lot, if not everything. And I'll tell you, I used to get the Australian gourmet, gourmet yeah. traveller and Vogue I entertaining. I still, I, I still I get love those my traveller. My mum brings it for us every time. She collects them and then brings them all when she comes uh, over. <laughs> and Vogue Entertaining, that was a great magazine. Yeah. Joan Campbell. Um, yes. Yes, her boardroom chicken salad was one of my favourites. Anyway, so um, here, we, amazing. Tuna. I always used to think, just well, tuna came in a can, really. Um, Occasionally you'd find fresh tuna, um, but down here, tuna is a multi-million euro industry. The bluefin tuna that live in the depths of the Atlantic um, come right past the coast here each spring on their way into the Mediterranean to spawn. Okay. So the harvest of the bluefin tuna, which is highly regulated, um, is called the almadraba. And here, they've been using this netting method of catching the bluefin tuna for centuries. Seemingly, the Phoenicians established it, even though the word almadraba is, is Moorish. Um, yeah, those Phoenicians were very clever. The Venetians in the Mediterranean basin, they knew that that tuna was the best tuna in the world. Um, the reason it's the best tuna in the world is because it builds up this blubber to keep cold in the to keep warm in the cold Atlantic mm -hmm. and this blubber is full of omega-3s is that is that correct for sure yeah um so when you eat it it just melts in your mouth like butter no, it's so good. these massive bluefin tuna head into the Mediterranean dump their eggs dump their sperm and then they start eating and then they leave the Mediterranean to go back to the Atlantic, but the, the goodness has gone, the, the blubber has gone when they leave. So it's not, they don't catch the tuna when they leave, it's only when they come in. So yeah, tuna, that was just, it's a massive thing in here. The preservation of tuna, preserving it in pork fat, olive oil, salt, the yeah, air Mahama, here. Uh, Mahama, it's just amazing. Like the people who Mahama. have tried. That, yeah. That's an amazing preserved um, dried tuna and, and beautiful with, with sherry, which is one and another one of your passions. We yeah. Spoke, we spoke to, um, to uh, Chelsea recently about the sherry, but the sherry, queen. You know, the, the sherry and the Mahama pairing is, is amazing oh. together. Yeah, Mahama, the air dried tuna, um, it's a bit like. Um, what, what, what do you have in Australia that's similar to that? Well, kangaroo, we do the same. Yeah, yeah, in South Africa, they've got something. No, um, 
we, you know. we, the way we dry it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it can be dried the same way. But we don't really eat. We don't really eat things. Mm, I'm just trying to think in Australia what we would have that would. I mean, I think Mahama is such an amazing, unique because the tuna here is unique. Yeah, exactly. So many people don't don't know what Mahama is, and I didn't know what it was till I came here. No. Chelsea introduced it to us. No, I wouldn't yeah. either. Right. And where there is great food, there is great wine. And, and then, the, sorry, keep going. And the sherry, as you say, the pairing of the of the dry sherry with the Mahama is just something so, else. So you so you came there, and then you decided that you'd set up a culinary school. Well, I came here to um to get away from cooking. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I spent a fortune on removal men taking down caseloads of cooking magazines like my Australian cooking magazines, all the British cooking magazines that I was going to sit here and enjoy going through. Oh, I still haven't. Um, <laughs> You've got a good library though. I, <laughs> You've got a good library. Pardon? You've got a great library. Oh, yeah. Huge. They're everywhere, these magazines. Um, and but the when I came here to live here, I got even more into the food and just the simple things like in saladilla, you know, the simple thing of potato tuna mayonnaise, just you get the best quality potatoes, the best quality tuna, the best quality mayo. It's just amazing with the Manthony sherry and Iberian pork, just the different cuts of Iberian pork. So I'm just sort of went on a feeding fest of all the all the delicious things here. The tomatoes even. Yeah. Just a simple tomato. The local lettuce it's the, and the sherry vinegar. You just take some local lettuce, sherry vinegar, a bit of salt, a little bit of olive oil. I love what just, I love what I love about Spain is that you actually have these same same traditional dishes like this, but in every region. So when we go to Aragon, um, or actually it's still in Catalonia when we go, when we go through. But there's a there's a restaurant that we love to go through, and it's exactly the same. The the tomatoes are from Barbastro. They're absolutely stunning, and you you just have a plate of tomato with olive oil and salt and some onions and and um and and black olives but it somehow um, yeah. it's it's every time I mean, it's my favorite restaurant in catalonia but it hasn't the menu hasn't um because my friend has been going over there as she was a little girl and she's in there she said the menu's never changed it's the 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 the, the way the restaurant must has take never there, changed right? but it, it every time i eat there i'm like mandy how can this lettuce taste so good how can this olive taste different to another olive? How come, the, like, it's just, but it's so plain. It's, it's the like, most beautiful thing. The tomato's like, the tomato, the potato's the potato, the chicken's the, the ingredients tomato. speak for themselves. You don't need to play around with them. No and it's around. great that restaurants don't change. Why should they change? They serve the best quality ingredients. Simple plate of tomatoes. I would drive anywhere if someone said the, the tomatoes are the best there. Yeah, the pan fried squid is the best there. I would sit in a car for two hours to test it. Well, you'll need to come and we'll we'll have to take you there, Annie, because uh, you this, can, then you can do a taste comparison um, from from Andalusia to to Catalonia because it's exactly what you're describing. And I think the simple like people think sometimes food food has to be you know complicated. Com but really, the, I, what I love about, I suppose, Mediterranean to some extent, but certainly, definitely Spain, is that the, 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 traditional, uh, the tradition of keeping things very simple is, is actually such a delight. And I will always say that to my friends, if they want to meet and go to a restaurant and they want to take me somewhere different, I'm like, don't be taking me to any of these modern, like, cuisine places. I just want, like as traditional as it can be i do not want any like foam on anything thank you <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny yeah oh. actually bought a foam machine i've never used it <laughs> i just want everything in it and i mix it together thanks that's all i want <laughs> and so can people come like so, so do you have people come and visit you and and um just for the day or or do they come do they book for, to, how, how does it work how do people come how, 
how it works. Yeah, well, I was inspired to do my kitchen here after working with a, a food tour company in Italy, and they would rent villas, and the, all the all, the whole group would be in this villa with the chef, and I would be the assistant chef. It was was fantastic, but people were stuck in that villa. Um, and I thought, oh my gosh, I could do the same here in Bihar with all this amazing food, all these amazing little bars, gorgeous little boutique hotels, the beach, amazing beach, Costa de Luz, just 10 minutes down the road here. So that was my inspiration to do my kitchen, to share the great food of this area, the great privilege of staying in such a lovely place for however long people care to come. The beautiful city of Cadiz just up the road, the Shari Bodegas just up the road. And yeah, so people, they come to me um, for a day. Lots of people who are doing a tour around Andalusia because a gr the, one of the best ways to see into the culture of an area is through the food. And a lot of the food that's still used on a daily basis here was left by the Moors. And a lot was expelled by the Moors. And it's just fascinating and the preservation of food and the different cuts of the Iberian pig and making cakes with almonds and no flour and all the different gazpachos you can make. So yeah, people can come to me for a day um, or sometimes I, I have people here for four days when I do my four typical classes, Taste of Andalusia, Flavors of Morocco and Fish, Fish here, phenomenal fish fish is phenomenal, it rhymes. Um, and I do seven days, and that includes a free day, because you need a free day if you're here for seven days, and a trip to Shari Triangle, and a gourmet tour of Cadiz, a walking gourmet tour of Cadiz, so you never put on any weight. Um, but now I'm offering um, special little packages. I've called them Dos Copas, for um, a couple to come and stay in my guest annex here, um, which has which has prepared um, the um, with no cushions, no books, just the way that all hotel rooms are prepared. Um, gives people a sense of security um, to be here if if they want to distance themselves from other travellers. And we will do two days of cooking and um, we can go out to the market. So they'd like to do that. If they don't want to do that, that's fine. But be my assistant and I will go to the markets. They've got use of my pool here. They have use of the terrace. With uh, Did you come up to my terrace when you were here? We had a pair of yeah. on your terrace. That's where you was... can see Star Wars in its... In its oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, the views and sundowners up on the oh. terrace and access to the little wine fridge. So... Dos Copas is what I'm offering for three nights that sounds um, great. on demand. Because I think um, <clears throat> with what's happening, excuse me, what's happening in the world, the staycation or, or certainly moving around within, within our own countries or making sure that you, you know where you're going and you're safe is really important. So I think um, this is a beautiful yeah. opportunity for people to come and have an amazing experience in a very special village in Spain and uh, and get to share your wonderful talents. It sounds like a lot of fun. And taste as many different things as, yeah. as possible. And shari class, of course. We have a shari class. And get educated. Yeah, so... Educated about this food and this wine and this and this region and... Um, and uh, I think it's it's really important because people have, as you said, a very sort of you know narrow idea about what Spanish food is, and um, it's it's. Uh, in fact, I was I was watching um, uh, the, the the kitchen show in Australia this week, and oh, yeah. they had to make a Spanish dish, and and they didn't really know how to make a Spanish dish very well, which I found very interesting. You know, their interpretation of what Spanish food is something different, so. I think it's a great thing for people to be able to come and enjoy it. Wow. Yeah, I was surprised, huh? I was really surprised. I think in Australia. We could have taken some tomatoes and sliced them up. Yeah, well, it was interesting. Think of the cherry vinegar. We have more of an idea of the Asian food than we would Spanish. Yeah, food. I think I think that's true, actually. Yeah. Ask them to make a Thai curry or a Vietnamese salad, and Australians are like, no worries. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, talking about tomato, um, fino, the fino sherry, because tomatoes are very, very hard um, food to, to match with wine. So gazpacho, anyone out there who's um, a fan of gazpacho in the summer, buy some fino sherry. Fino, chilled fino on a chilled gazpacho, just one of the best matches in the world. That's great. What a, what a great tip. Mm. That's nice. amazing. I must try that myself. We're doing that in Aragon this summer. Yeah, actually, that's a great So what idea. is it? Fino sherry, cold fino, fino sherry. Fino sherry with tomato salad or, or um, okay. gazpacho or salmarejo. Or if you're hardcore, you can have fino sherry with your tostada con tomate for breakfast. Oh, that sounds, that sounds, like, that sounds like a good start to summer. <laughs> sounds great. So, so Annie, if people wanted to get in touch with you, how do they get in touch with you? Well, my website um, is www.anniebspain.com. Perfect. Um, that's probably the best way. Or my web uh, email, info at anniebspain.com. So I'm delighted to share um, any restaurant recommendations for anyone that's coming down here. Um, brilliant. That's brilliant. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll, actually, we'll put all your details up as well so people Thank can you. see it. And um, I shared one of your recipes yesterday on our, on our um, uh, lifestyle and um, Pilates program. Oh, um, which one? Wellbeing program. So um, which one did you share the the... Uh, I shared the the tuna and tomato salad. Was it? Is that what? No, the tuna and the tuna, tuna and red, red, pepper. red pepper salad. Yes, that's right. Great summer salad. No, it looked great. So I hope everyone enjoys that this week. And um, but next week we'll we'll, um, we'll we'll maybe we should work out a time and we can do a do a, a recipe. I'd love to try your gazpacho. It'd be wonderful. Maybe we should pencil that in and we could do a workshop together. Ooh, we could show people how, to, how does that sound? Love to. Yeah. I could do melon and mint gazpacho. Oh, melon and mint gazpacho. That sounds great. Or have you had ajo blanco, the almonds and garlic gazpacho? I'm allergic to almonds. That'll kill me, Annie. <laughs> you don't do almonds. Oh, okay. We can't, we can't kill you. You're too important. No, 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 not at the moment, please. I don't cope with any more. No, all right. Well, I, I like the, maybe we could, I like them. What, what would you pair the melon and, and mint with? Wow. Well, you know what? Because it's summer, if you love rosy wine, which mm. I do, it might be delicious with a lovely rosado. Great. That's great. Oh, mm. that, I never thought about that because as soon as you mentioned that, I thought I really want to make that now. So let's let's chat and let's make a workshop together and, and we we'll like it. Thank you. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's been wonderful. And um, thank you. We'll, yes. we will be back. We'll see you soon. Bye, Annie. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.